Lecture 20, China and Japan in the long 19th century. Uh, sort of an overarching theme here, a comparison of how China and Japan react to Western dominance. Uh, let's talk about some similarities first. Uh, these two societies obviously share many cultural features. Uh, Japan is heavily influenced by China over the centuries. Uh, it's not a single civilization, but it, these uh, two societies are closely related. Uh, both are forced to respond to the West. Uh, both are forced to undergo uh, reforms. Both China and Japan are, are forcibly opened uh, to Western power, Western markets, and Western influence. Uh, China, with her defeat to, uh, to Great Britain in the Opium Wars in the 1830s, and of course Japan uh, was forcibly opened by the uh, United States Navy under Admiral Perry in the 1850s. Uh, some differences. China's long tradition with technological superiority. Uh, Japan has not been known for this. Uh, China has great natural resources. In fact, China has long been described as self-sufficient. Uh, Japan, of course, does not have an abundance of natural resources. And, of course, this will lead to disaster in the 20th century as Japan becomes more aggressive in her attempt to acquire natural resources. Uh, let's look at uh, Japan specifically here for a moment. Uh, increasingly, as we move into the 19th century, you see Japan favors widespread education. Uh, by 1868, Japan had decided to emulate the West. Uh, the Meiji er, era in Japan uh, is one of modernization and reform. Uh, Japan sent observers to the West to discover what might be imitated by the Japanese. Uh, Japanese feudalism is disbanded. That's the end of the samurai. Western-style par parliamentary, uh, parliamentary democracy is established. Uh, Japan adopts Western dress. Uh, the Japanese elite look a lot like Western elite, intellectuals, businessmen, military leaders. Uh, Japan creates a modern navy, as we will discover in 18, 1941. Uh, Japan creates a modern infrastructure with railroads, uh, public health measures, uh, mass education for boys and girls, which is a change. Uh, reform is a challenge to Confucianism. Uh, scientific and technical trainings introduced we had the beginning of a consumer society in Japan. Uh, Japanese resistance? Well, Western books, social sciences are restricted. Uh, books promoting Japanese culture of community uh, are promoted instead. So you can see with the Japanese, there's adoption on the one hand and rejection on the other of uh, westernization. Japanese industrialization, a couple of words here. By the 1890s, Japan had factories and exports uh, with which to buy fuels and equipment for their industrialization. Uh, high taxes on the peasantry helped pay for this advancement. Yet, women, girls uh, still work in sweatshops to produce commodities. There's a silk export market in Japan. Uh, poor wages equaled greater profits in the ability to buy expensive goods from abroad. Uh, this heavy, heavy industrialization will continue on into the 20th century, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, a few remarks about China specifically. Uh, unlike Japan, China had no clear-cut decision to begin reform. Uh, the first railroad was actually destroyed by the government. Uh, a pattern of hesitation to adopt Western ways or modernization. Uh, there's unrest in China, uh, civil war, death, and dislocation of, of many, many people. Uh, portions of Chinese territory are occupied or seized uh, by both European powers and uh, by the Russians. Uh, these incursions reduced China's economic capacity. There's increasing hostility to foreigners uh, amongst the Chinese. Uh, the Boxer Rebellion in the 19th century is an anti-foreigner revolt. By the 1890s, China began to come to terms with the challenge of modernization. Uh, Chinese students visit the United States, Europe, and Japan. 
uh, Christian missionaries established an educational system in parts of China. Uh, foot binding a tradition uh, now declines. Uh, Chinese reform is late and incomplete and lags behind Japan. Why? Western encroachments on China were much more damaging uh, than Western interference in Japan. Western intervention caught China in a period of stagnation. Uh, Western interference in Japan uh, was different in that the, Japan, the Japanese at this point were much more energetic, capable of resistance. Uh, Japan had a history of successful imitation. Uh, China did not. Of course, it's usually others who imitate China, and this may uh, account for this. Japan knew it was possible to imitate without losing traditions and identity. Uh, China did not have this experience and was much more wary of outside influence. Japan borrowed from the West, but managed Western influence. Japan regulated Western ownership of property and factories. Uh, Western influence is modified and managed uh, much better in Japan than in China. Conflict. The Japanese-Chinese War uh, of the 1890s, this of course will be extended into the 20th century. Uh, Japanese victories uh, accounted for in part by their modern military and industrial strength. Japanese pattern of aggression will begin here over Korea um, against Russia in the 1904-05 war uh, with the Tsar. Uh, Japan becomes a strong regional power with their occupation of Korea, their defeat of the Russians. Uh, Japanese aggression will continue into the uh, 1930s with the start of the Second World War in the Pacific. Uh, let's draw some conclusions here. Uh, China realizes that its only effective response to Western challenges will be through revolution. And of course we'll look at this in a later lecture. Japan modernizes without revolution but with internal dissent and social problems. Japan's experience in the long 19th century is unique. Modernization without full westernization. Japan demonstrates the capacity to change constructively. Chinese sluggishness to change was more typical than Japan's quicker adaptation. Chinese um, Chinese Confucianism uh, begins to subside and gives way to a more revolutionary society. Here's a quote to end this lecture with, uh, from McNeil's Human Web. Uh, the first quote on Japan, the second uh, discussing China. Quote, but to its good fortune, Japan's population was usually literate, habituated to hierarchy, group loyalty, and discipline. After a political struggle highlighted by the installation of the Minji Emperor, who reigned from 1867 to 1912, Japan acquired a ruthless elite firmly committed to learning the tricks that made foreigners so formidable. And then on China, quote, China's military remained undereducated in technical subjects, under-equipped and unsuccessful in war. China could not prevent the loss of tributary kingdoms to France uh, in Vietnam, for instance, and Britain in Burma in the 1880s. Of course, Burma and Vietnam are, lie adjacent to China, and yet they're being overrun by Western powers. In 1895, China lost another tributary kingdom, Korea, uh, to the Japanese. And most gallingly, an island province, Taiwan, in war with Japan. After the Boxer Rebellion of 1900, a failed anti-foreigner uh, uprising supported by the imperial family, China was left with a crushing indemnity and the humiliation of foreign troops in Beijing. So you can see that China and Japan react quite differently uh, to modernization, uh, to Western dominance, uh, we'll track these developments into the 20th century um, with a great deal of uh, social upheaval and indeed uh, war. Thank you.